I was lying on my bed late one Friday evening, scrolling through my phone. A pile of school books and papers sat in the corner of my room and, although I had a mind-numbing amount of work to do, I refused to start that night. I was in the middle of a video about a golden retriever saving a baby from a fox when Dylan, my best friend, FaceTimed me. I accepted and an image of Dylan appeared. His face was washed out with the harsh light of his computer screen. His phone appeared to be propped up behind his keyboard. Jay, he said, what are you doing right now? I was watching a dog save a kid, but you interrupted that. Oh, bummer. Well, go open your Tor browser. Dude, I don't want to scroll through all the drugs people can buy on the dark web right now. It gets old. A few months prior, Dylan and I had tried our hand at exploring the dark web. We did the research, downloaded the necessary browser, and started our dive into the most mysterious corners of the internet. At first, we were disappointed. The dark web was nothing like what people had described it to be, at least not at first glance. It just looked like a shittier version of the internet, with more broken links and useless information. Then, we did a little more research and learned how to find the more interesting stuff. We had no interest in the horrifying videos people had talked about. In fact, we took care to stay away from anything like that. The furthest we ever came down the dim path was to a site called the Silk Road. This was a dark net black market. Here, you could buy almost any illegal thing imaginable, but the main commodities were drugs and weapons. At first, we were excited by the novelty of it all, pumped full of adrenaline from knowing that we were a few clicks away from having something we shouldn't. Of course, we would never actually buy anything. We were just curious to see what was out there, but I had already seen it and had no interest in exploring further. Dude, Dylan said, didn't you hear? The Silk Road got shut down. The FBI traced it back to some guy and arrested him. Oh. I said, then what do you want to do? I found this game. It says we can win real money if we play. Just log on and I'll show you. I rolled my eyes, but I had nothing better to do. So I got out of bed, sat down in front of my computer and started up the Tor browser. All right, I said, this better not be some fucked up torture game or something. Jay, calm down. It's nothing like that. Go to wouldyourather.onion. I heard a crash and Dylan's phone clattered across the floor. I couldn't see anything on his side, but I heard struggling and someone choking. Dylan? I asked, my heart pounding. Dylan, are you okay? Someone grabbed me from behind. An arm was tied around my neck and I couldn't even scream. A damp rag was forced onto my face. The smell on it hurt my head. I continued to fight against the arm for a moment and then slipped into unconsciousness. I awoke next to Dylan in a large metallic room. Dylan was wearing a blue jumpsuit with no shoes. Looking down, I saw that I had the same attire. Next to us, there were two men in red jumpsuits. One of them was a large man with a pimpled face and a hairy chin. The other was a thin, pale man. Beyond them, there were two college-aged girls in green jumpsuits. As they sat up, I saw that they were identical twins. They were blonde and beautiful. All of us had a thick metal brace around our necks. The rest of the room was empty, except for a platform to the left. An ominous figure stood on the platform. He was wearing a gray jumpsuit. There was a round, featureless mask on his face. It was split down the middle with one half black and the other half white. The word or was printed on the middle of the mask. The O was on the white side and it was written in black. The R was on the black side and it was written in white. Welcome to Would You Rather. A robotic voice rang out across the room. Today, each team will be following through on the choices they submitted. Failure to complete the task will result in elimination. Non-compliance will result in elimination. What is this? The large man bellowed. You can't keep us here. You better let us go, right? The man collapsed on the floor in agony. 
His body convulsed, then it stopped. Blackbeard, the voice began, has just demonstrated what will happen if you refuse to cooperate. This was a warning. The man with the username Blackbeard stood back up. He was sweating and looking terrified, but he was still alive. One of the girls was whimpering. Dylan leaned next to me and whispered, Jay, what is going on? I didn't know and I didn't answer. Parts of the walls across the room moved and three large screens appeared, each in a row corresponding to the three teams. The first prompt was on the screens and below were the choices each person had made. We will start with Dylan, Blackbeard, and Amanda. Olive oil was written on our screen. The other two screens had the word syrup. The floors in front of us shifted and three metal chairs rose from the floor. Our chair had a large jug of olive oil on it. All teams who finish drinking their chosen substance will move on to the next task. Vomiting will result in punishment, but not elimination, so long as it is not self-induced. Dylan looked at me. This won't be so bad, right? You'll be fine, I said. He sat on the chair and held the jug in his lap. You've made your choice, the strange voice said. Now, follow through. They all unscrewed the caps and began drinking. Dylan effortlessly chugged the first quarter of the jug. Then he stopped and stared ahead. He bent over and puked. Pure oil came out of his mouth. Punishment for blue team. Dylan screamed and fell to the floor. But the shock didn't last long, and he got back up. He began to chug rapidly again, downing another quarter of the oil. Then he puked again and collapsed on the floor as the electric current shot through his body. I understood his strategy. He knew he couldn't contain all of the oil, so he was chugging as much of it at a time as he could just to puke it up. He must have decided that the electric shocks were manageable. Time stretched on. They all drank slower the longer the task went on. Blackbeard was the only one who didn't puke. He was somehow able to stomach all that syrup. Finally, Dylan sat down in the chair with an empty bottle. The poor girl, Amanda, still had a quarter of syrup left, and she had already puked the most. She was sobbing as she continued the cycle of drinking, puking, and receiving an electric shock. The last bit of her syrup seemed to take an eternity to drink. We all sat in horror as the girl was tortured, but I didn't know what any of us could do for her. Amanda downed the last bit and managed to stomach it. All teams will continue to the second task. Allie grabbed Amanda and the twin girls began to sob in each other's arms. The screens at the other end of the room changed to the second prompt. Our screen had the word Coles. The pale man with the username Tupac had also chosen Coles. Allie had chosen broken glass. Three sections of the floor fell away and a platform rose in front of each team. Our platform stretched nearly to the other end of the room and was covered in burning coals. The platform in front of Red Team was the same. Allie's platform ended only halfway across the room and was covered in glass. Dylan grabbed me. His face was shiny with oil, and up close, I could smell burns on his neck and see marks from the electric shocks. You got this, he said. Just like when we were camping, no problem. I nodded and stepped forward, feeling a rush of adrenaline and moving into a runner's pose. The voice of our captor filled the room. You have made your choice. Now, follow through. I took off, ready to sprint to the end of the line without a thought. But I had only taken my second step when electricity filled my body. I collapsed onto the burning coals. The robotic voice again. The choice you made was to walk across coals. This is your only warning. I pushed myself up and stood on the coals, my bare feet already blistered. Slowly, I made my way to the other end of the room. The pain was nearly unbearable. Every instinct I had was telling me to run to the end and step off the platform. But I didn't want to find out what it meant to be eliminated from the game. I focused on patting out small flames on my jumpsuit from when I had fallen on the floor. Breathing deeply, 
I imagined that I was camping with Dylan and that we were playing a dumb game, seeing who could walk the slowest on the coals. The thought convinced me that I was in control of the situation and it helped. The ground felt smooth. I had stepped off the platform. I had made it to the other side of the room. Collapsing onto the floor, I lifted my feet into the air as tears streamed down my face. My feet looked like raw hamburger meat. They were glowing red. A scream came from the other end of the room. Allie had slipped on the broken glass, blood streaming from her arms and legs. I'm not doing this, she shrieked. I'm not moving another inch. Failure to follow through will result in elimination, the figure said. Fine, I don't care. I'm not going to play your stupid game. She was sobbing. Very well. Green team has been eliminated. We watched with horror. Both Allie and Amanda began writhing on the floor. This time, the electric current was so strong, I could hear the humming from across the room. I could smell the burning flesh. The convulsion stopped, and Allie and Amanda never moved again. Tupac made it to the other side and fell to the floor like I did. Congratulations, red team and blue team. You have both followed through on your choice. Regroup with your team for the third task. The platforms of coals and glass moved back down into the floor. Dylan sprinted across the room and sat me up. Dude, are you okay? I'll live, I said. The screens, now behind us, changed to the third question. Our screen had the word spiders. Red teams had the word snakes. Fuck me, Dylan said under his breath. The smooth metal floor shook. Two large pits opened in the floor. The sound of legs scuttling rose from one and hissing rose from the other. I crawled over. Dylan's pit looked like a shifting mass of fuzzy water. Thousands of spiders of different sizes crawled over each other and attempted to climb up the perfectly smooth walls. Blackbeard's pit looked like living intestines sliding and slithering. I can't do this, Dylan whimpered. Yes, you can, I said, grabbing his hand from my seat on the floor. You saw what happened to the girls. You'll be okay, I promise. The voice said, You will enter the pits and lie flat for five minutes. Each pit contains some deadly species. Avoid those. To complete this task, you must survive and emerge from the pit. You have made your choice. Now follow through. Dylan and Blackbeard descended ladders in their corresponding pits. When Dylan lay down on his back, he disappeared under the mass of spiders. Time crawled forward. I heard Dylan softly sobbing. You got this, Dylan. Just don't move. Blackbeard screamed. I saw him try to stand up, then fall back down. The way he fell didn't look like he had been shocked. How unfortunate, the voice said. Blackbeard has met with a venomous viper. His heart is now stopped. Red Team did not complete their task. Red Team will be eliminated. What? Tupac shouted. That's not fair. I didn't do anything wrong. It's not my fault that- The hum sounded again and Tupac fell. The smell of burning flesh was even stronger since he was right next to me. I thought I should care about these people dying, but I didn't. I was only thinking of Dylan. Congratulations, blue team. You are the last team remaining. You may exit the pit. Dylan sat up and stumbled up the ladder. I hugged him, ignoring the pain from my seared feet. His skin was swollen and lumpy. He apparently had sustained a fair number of bites. Now for the final special choice. This choice was made by Stoner69. My heart skipped a beat. I'd forgotten in all the chaos. I hadn't thought ahead to the final question I had answered. No, I whispered. The screen changed. It read, would you rather receive $100,000 and have your partner die or have you and your partner go home empty handed? Under the screen, my answer shined brightly. Receive $100,000, let partner die. Dylan turned to me. Jay? He questioned fear in his eyes. It was just a joke, 
I said frantically. I didn't think it was real. I turned to the mysterious man on the platform. I've changed my mind. I don't want the money. I don't want him to die. The mask turned to me. The voice said, You've made your choice. Now, follow through. The hum of electricity pierced the air. Dylan crumpled. His body jerked and jolted and spasmed. I screamed and grabbed him, feeling his muscles contracting and releasing in my hands. His neck turned black, and then he was gone. I looked up to see the man with the mask disappear into an opening in the wall. My shock collar clicked and fell from my body. A small opening appeared in front of me. A bag ascended. Inside the bag were crumpled bills, not even rubber banded or neatly stacked. I felt that it was this psychopath's way of adding insult to injury. The wall beside me lifted, opening a portal to the outside world. A cool breeze rolled in. I sat in front of the bag and stared blankly ahead, past Dylan's body. The bills unfurled and scattered into the vacant wind. <laughs>